Hello, how are you? Oh, damn it. Hi. Maybe I should wear a hat. Hi. No, no hat. Okay. What's up, guys? Number two. Two. Yep, got that one right. What's up guys, number two coming at you and it's very exciting to get these videos out to you guys. Uh, it's very hard because I've had to learn how to edit all these things as I go. So editing the videos, editing thumbnails, making websites, it's just really hard to learn. Um, it's a big learning curve but hopefully it's good enough for you guys and uh, hopefully you're liking all the content. I know it's only number two so there's not been that much content but we're gonna slowly get it out to you guys and um, hopefully enjoying it. So uh, today we're gonna to move on to seeing the surgeon. You know, it's an exciting time because getting out to the surgeon is really the time where we go through what surgery we're gonna do and also when we're gonna do it. Um, so hopefully it'll be pretty quick because obviously I wanna start the rehab process as soon as possible so I can get back as soon as possible. It's gonna be determined by um, the type of surgery I have, which I'm most likely going to do the same surgery as I did last time on my other knee, uh, which was an allograft from a cadaver. Um, I'll go through all of these uh, different types of surgeries that you can get with an ACL uh, after I see the doctor and I get back home and, and I'm able to sit down and really discuss it with you. So um, yeah, for now, we're gonna head out to the doctor. I've got physio tomorrow actually, so I might even join these two vlogs together and uh, take you to the physio as well. I'm gonna go make a coffee first because I need it. It's really early in the morning and I've got a long drive to do. So um, let's get it done. What's up? Finished at the surgeon. Love it. I'm actually really excited about getting this surgery done. Um, I guess getting involved in everything um, with the surgeon and, and talking about all the, the points and facts about what I'm going to go through and um, all the different surgery types and that, which we knew what surgery um, I was going to do, but it was just really cool to be in that environment um, and and get excited about getting fixed and uh, get back to playing football. So um, I'm about to sneeze. No. Yep. <coughs> ah. Yeah. So uh, anyway, <laughs> getting back to it. Um, we went uh, through pretty much everything about the MRIs, the reports. Uh, he did some tests on my knee, standard, um, and then basically, yeah, we just talked about what. Uh, time frame we can do it in and um, when he's going to be able to get the ligament for the surgery so I'll fill you in on what happened when I get home because traffic's about to start and I don't want to get stuck in traffic because traffic sucks I'm sure everyone over the world thinks traffic sucks and right now is prime time for it to start so hopefully I get through it because if I don't it's going to double my time home let's get out of here and I'll fill you guys in when I get home Yes, we made it back from that horrible traffic. I thought I was going to beat it, but I didn't. So we're back now after quite a long day. Uh, saw the doctor. Didn't really want me to take a video of it, which was strange. But, um, you know, what can you do? I took some still photos. 
want to throw that in and hopefully get this information that I heard from the surgeon to you guys now. <laughs> So basically what he said was that 99% of the report, the MRI report, was correct. So that's great news. There was one thing that they missed in the report and that was just a flick out of the cartilage. But he said that that will heal itself uh, before the surgery because uh, the surgery that I'm going to actually do, which is the allograft from a cadaver, they've got to find the ligament. And to find the ligament, it takes time. Um, so my surgery will be pushed back a little bit. I wanted to go through uh, the different surgeries with you, which is basically what the doctor and I went through. Um, he said he has to go through those different surgeries with me, but he knows what surgery I did last time and he recommended to do the same surgery this time. The four different surgeries are the hamstring, the patella, the synthetic Lars uh, ligament and the allograft. So basically your hamstring is the most common one and probably the most widely used, I guess, um, in terms of ACL reconstructions. In the last, uh, in the last two, three years, uh, the surgeon has told me that an allograft, within Australia, an allograft has really come up to the forefront of ACL reconstructions. So anyway, getting back to the hamstring one, the reason why I didn't choose that one is because I didn't do it on, on my other leg but also because with a hamstring, you have to rehab two parts of your body. So you gotta rehab your knee and you gotta rehab your hamstring. Now, my hamstrings are pretty weak as it is, so I didn't really wanna go down that route because if I take some hamstring, then I'm gonna weaken it even more. And I have, I've struggled strengthening my hamstring. I struggle strengthening it to last a whole season. So usually through the first half of the season, I'm pretty good. When I get to the second half of the season, you, f you start feeling these little niggles, which is normal in any sport because it's a long season. You know, we were playing two games a week um, for, f I think it was like for three months, which is crazy, crazy. Um, a lot of athletes out there do that. And um, obviously you, you have to keep up with your prehab, your rehab, everything. You gotta, you gotta keep doing all these exercises to uh, keep strong. I do go through that and um, I still feel a little bit of weakness come towards the end of the season. So um, we crossed that one off the list. Now onto the patella. The patella one, I don't really hear of it happening uh, too much these days. Um, it used to happen a lot back in the day and a lot of people found that afterwards they had problems with obviously the patella tendon. Uh, they get a lot of pain there. Um, there's a lot of scar tissue there. It's not the one that I really want to look forward to, which the surgeon really didn't even tap into um, about the patella surgery because he doesn't really like that way of doing it. So I don't really have that much info for you, but all I heard is that a lot of people afterwards get a lot of pain underneath their kneecap where the patella um, tendon is. So um, moving on to the synthetic and Lars. Synthetic and Lars is basically built by a scientist and put into your body. A lot of the time this gets rejected uh, because it is synthetic, so it's not, obviously not of bodily material. I've heard a lot of problems with it, a lot of re-rupture. Um, a lot of times it doesn't take into the body and um, yeah, it's, it's a huge percentage of failure rate. So obviously I'm not gonna go with that one. Now onto the allograft from a cadaver. So an allograft from a cadaver is basically a ligament taken from a deceased person. Um, obviously there's a lot of guidelines to adhere by when they do pick a ligament for your body which I'm happy that my surgeon actually goes out and sees this ligament first before he um, obviously wants to use it for an ACL surgery so he has the guidelines that he wants to meet for himself so that makes it that makes me feel a lot more um, confident within that ligament <clears throat> Basically, I've done it on my right knee before, so I wanted to do the same surgery because I didn't have that many problems. What the allograft is taken from is usually the ligaments from your ankle. Then they've got to take that away and they've got to do testing on it. So scientists will go through it to make sure there's no diseases in it uh, because there is that chance, very low chance, but there is that chance of a disease carrying through. I'm doing the allograft uh, surgery. You guys, it's a personal preference. 
personal preference to your doctor as well, what your doctor's confident with. Um, I'm not saying do the allograft, I'm saying make sure you look at all the options and then pick the best one for you. I'm now going to swap over to tomorrow because tomorrow is my first uh, physio session and I'm looking forward to that because he's the one that's going to um, really get me ready for the surgery. And um, obviously I know how to do a lot of prehab, but going to a physio and, and getting right before the surgery is very, very important because it can decrease the rehab time quite severely. So um, I'm going to do everything I can to get back as soon as possible, but also go through the right routes and you know, do the right things to be able to get back uh, confidently and you know, as close to 100% as I possibly can. So anyway, moving on to tomorrow where I see the physio. See you guys and guys. See you guys and guys. That was weird, but I'll see you then. Hello, my friends. <sighs> Disappointing news for you. I told you that I was going to the physio for the first time today and I missed the appointment. <laughs> oh, spewing. I don't know why I missed it. I was, uh, I was up, it was early in the morning, but I was up, I was eating brekkie, switched on the TV, got a phone call. Hey, uh, you coming to the physio today? Oh, yep, totally forgot. I don't know how I forgot, but I did. So the good guys that Jubilee Physio is, they fit me in in the afternoon. So I'm happy about that. I'm actually gonna go there early and um, haven't had lunch, so I'm gonna have some lunch, but I'm gonna make sure I'm there early and uh, I'm gonna bring you guys with me. So let's go. <laughs> Yes, we made it early. How good is that? Um, not great weather. Hoping it uh, stops raining soon. But yeah, just wanted to give you guys a quick update of why I'm going to the physio now. Um, I wanted to go to the physio now to get my body back into the correct uh, anatomical positions. So basically getting my body parts into the places they're meant to be. I've had uh, a few issues whilst I've been away. My hips need to be realigned and um, well I think they need to be because I'm getting a bit of a back problem so once I get inside I'm gonna ask him to really just go through my whole body and um, you know get it back into the correct positioning also whilst um, talking about the knee and what the surgeon said and just allow him to fix me before I go into this surgery. Um, it's going to be a, a, a long road towards the surgery because I'm going to be doing a lot of prehab and um, well, having to do a lot of prehab and, and making sure there's not a lot of uh, muscle atrophy. So um, because it's such a long time in between uh, seeing the surgeon and finding the ligament to do the surgery, um, I'm going to have to do a lot more to keep my body um, in the correct anatomical positions. Um, but yeah, so that's basically what I'm going to go uh, in today to do and uh, hopefully get all fixed up and ready and prepared for all this prehab that's to come now. So um, yeah, let's get it done guys. Hey guys, got my coffee. Um, just here at Jubilee Sports Physio. Um, yeah, as I said, I was late before, so <laughs> I've turned up a little bit early and I'm not sure how much I can film, but um, I'll try and get a bit because I think I have to take my pants off. But um, yeah, I'll try and get a little bit. Anyway, here we go. Hey guys, here at uh, Jubilee Physio and this is Michael. I've known him for about, oh, what? I can... 10 years 10, plus yeah years. 10 years plus 12 years so um he's going to be working on me through my recovery so uh i'll set you up and we'll get to, we'll get going Hey guys, I'm just going to do a quick voiceover while you enjoy this amazing footage. There was no time to do an intro with Michael. Uh, we got a lot to go through today and there just wasn't any time. So I'll get videos of Michael and Kieran, the other physio, in later videos. Uh, so basically we're talking through the rupture and what movements I did when it happened and the pains I was feeling in the knee before the game. 
So maybe that had something to do with the rupture itself. Um, you'll see James, another physio, walking in and out because he loves to be on camera. But he has also done his ACL and he's about five months ahead of me. So what we're talking about now is a Baker cyst. And a Baker cyst occurs when uh, extra fluid is pushed into one of the small sacs of tissue behind your knee. And um, this is also called the popliteal cyst, but it would cause tightness, stiffness, um, and it will also have a slight pain behind the knee into the upper calf. But the doctor said that a lot of people have this and it's not a big issue. They'll just drain it when it comes to the surgery. So uh, anyway, my SD card filled up here at the end of this video and I didn't get to show everything that we did in this appointment. But um, yeah, enjoy the rest of the video and uh, hopefully I'll get some good content out to you soon. Alright guys, back after a long day with the physio. Uh, got my body in the right places. Sorry I didn't do an intro. I'll do one soon with the physios, but we didn't have enough time to be able to go through everything and also an intro. So I'll get to that in the next few episodes. Um, but for now, I'm going to do some recovery with that bad boy there. Um, I'll do a video with all my products that I use throughout the rehab uh, later on, and that'll be in the products section of my website. Um, but for now, I'm just going to recover, just relax after a long day. And um, yeah, that was pretty much it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Sorry, there was a lot of talking, a lot of information, uh, but I needed to get it out there because I said I was going to take you guys everywhere with me. So um, if you liked it, uh, subscribe and smash that thumbs up button. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next episode. Ciao.